Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to the Philcraft Survival Channel. I have a special guest today, Mr. Clay Croft from Expedition Overland. Thank you so much for hosting us, man. I appreciate it. Heck yeah, anytime. Uh, if you don't know Expedition Overland, shame on you. You should look at the show notes below. You can get dialed in. Basically, everything that you want to know about overlanding, period, from, I mean, the idea of I have a destination in mind to packing, preparing, and then setting out on an amazing journey. You can learn through that experience through their channel. And that channel now lives on your own website. Yep, we have uh, the Overlander Network that you can watch all of our stuff for ad-free. It's behind a paywall. But uh, other than that, YouTube, X Overland on YouTube. And we've got four seasons on Amazon Prime. So awesome. Um, I, I watched your stuff when it transitioned to Amazon Prime because I like seeing it on the big screen. But now you could actually do that with both because you can get the app uploaded from the Overland Network and then displayed on your TV, which is what I'm doing. Because it's hard to watch such epic content on a small cell phone. The reason I had Clay on this to talk to you guys about bugging out, he's the subject matter expert. I have a lot of real world experience and evasion corridors and doing it on foot and all these different considerations around special operations, but not in like, hey, I need to grab my mobility rig and bug out of a bad situation. Remember, bugging out is applicable to you because it's not just a military thing. It's like, there's a natural disaster. There's a fire, there's civil unrest. I need to move from bad to good. And how am I gonna do it effectively with my family or just myself? Uh, yesterday, Clay took us on an epic tour of the back country of Montana. We got to test a couple bikes, including the new Yamaha T700, as well as uh, a couple two strokes and, and his bike, the uh, KTM. I wanted to get your opinion because uh, you have a lot of experience overlanding all over the world and thinking about these considerations. And we've had the conversation of how what you do is just by benefit setting you up for success in the worst case scenario. When it comes to overlanding with bikes, what is your, I don't know, what is your philosophy on setting up a bike and making it a proper setup for these remote overland experiences. Well, any anytime you talk about traveling remote or using any sort of vehicle to sustain your life out of, you're gonna have some basic principles. So you're gonna have shelter, you're gonna need range of fuel economy, you're gonna need water, you're gonna need food, you know, all the things that we need to live. And then the, whatever the machine needs to live. Depending on the vehicle that you're in, either from a you know, big overland, vehicle to a motorcycle, the range of how much it can sustain itself will vary, but you're getting different trade-offs. Mm. Big Ram over here with the big campers and 60 gallons of water and 75 gallons of diesel, I can be out in that thing for a long, long time uh, after it's outfitted correctly, but it's slow. Motorcycle, really fast, super agile, gets you out, gets you through a bunch of stuff far better than a vehicle can, a four-wheeled machine. Uh, just by being on two wheels, but you're limited in how long you can be off grid unless you're really savvy and good at resourcing. Mm. Yeah, the idea of caches and acquisition, which is a nice word for stealing stuff. Um, <laughs> when when stuff hits the fan, you need to be prepared to, to move. And I, there's this internal debate in my company about the idea of bugging out and what are the best platforms, which I love because often in these debates and discussions, we we source the best solution. Uh, I wanted to ask you on the topic of the civil unrest, because civil unrest is something that's taking place all over the world. And you know, when I learned about breaking contact or evading, it was mostly centered around this idea of a country being sovereign, peaceful, until it's not. You know, they have a, a, a coup, a takeover, and then you have to move on foot, use any means necessary. And civil unrest is the subject matter because that happens to be our first episode okay. of Bugging Out. So let's say you're in, I don't know, San Francisco. Okay. A pretty densely populated area, only a few ways into the Bay Area via uh, highways and even public transportation. And you had to bug out from that location 
to a more rural environment. So let's say going east through Sacramento, maybe the foothills of the Sierras. Okay. What would be the best platform you would recommend as a solo person, just you, if you had a bug out? For me, I like the idea of something that is capable on road, but very capable off road and nimble and light enough that I can maneuver the bike really well. That's why I have landed on the KTM 690 for now. I mean, th these things change over time as we forge our ideas, but still think it's probably one of the better strikes in the balance of on-road and off-road capabilities, plus being able to carry enough things to sustain your life. In a, what did you call it, civil unrest, more than likely once you get past that area, there's still all these resources. So there's gonna be food, there's gonna be fuel once you get past that danger zone or that, the zone of the conflict. If you're talking about something more grand scale, nationwide, east coast, west coast shutdown sort of things, then we would probably bring in some other considerations like range. But the good thing is like on motorcycles, you can find your three gallons of gas just about anywhere. A guy's got that in his garage to run his lawnmower. Hmm. Get it in his car yeah. with a garden hose and get that out. Yeah. If, if you were going to make the transition from a recreational experience into bugging out in the civil unrest scenario, what are some of the features of your current bike, your current KTM, that you think would benefit both arenas? I can, you like, so this right here is my KTM 690. It's 2018. Uh, there's a newer version since, but pretty much the same motorcycle. I'm able to duck and get around an urban environment really well because it does have the dirt bike capability. Stairs, get up things, get around things, get over stuff that once you get into the bigger bikes, which I don't have a lot of experience with, you know, a bigger bike comes with a lot of drawbacks when it comes to its nimbleness, mm -hmm. like where you can take it. And then if you drop it a bunch or you know, whatever, it's, it's just a big machine to work. Probably the area of weakness on this motorcycle would be in the defense side. Mm figuring out how to carry your your defensive like your firearms of whatever you decide would be like the next thing i'd have to level up on this mm -hmm. but i've got comms range i've got shelter really good shelter like i can get through anything storms or whatever i have water filtration i have three days worth of dehydrated food on it i have a good sleeping system a warm sleeping system so i'm not I'm not going to be wanting, I'm going to be able to maintain my, my life and my systems really well off the bike. I'll have to be resourceful though, because I can't carry too much of it. Mm. Uh, so within three days, I'm going to start being pretty hungry. Mm. But at least, I mean, but three days of mobility to get away from a situation, that's a lot. I, I don't know. You'd have to look at the stats, but like three days, you're probably within the clear statistically most of the time, unless you were like really embedded deep somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I, I think it's cool to see that translation of being able to kit out your rig for kind of those off road, off grid experiences that might be 72 hour experiences. Mm -hmm. And then uh, obviously by benefit, you're setting yourself up for the bug out. Why there's this, there's this common debate of four stroke versus two stroke mm -hmm. versus a uh, dual sport versus a dirt bike. Mm -hmm. What is your opinion on that? And, and what platform would you choose if you had to pick one? Depending on the area of the country, if we're going to stick to civil San, unrest. San, San yeah. Francisco, civil unrest, I think the dual sport is still just the best. The dirt bikes are really, really with any mobility platform, you have a range of capabilities and livabilities. So on one side, you might have the dirt bike. Man, you can jump that thing. You can do all kinds of crazy stuff with it, but it's super hard to live off of. Mm. You go all the way over to say like a BMW 1200 GS. You're not doing what you're doing on a dirt bike, but it's very easy to cruise, put big miles down, and you feel great at the end of the day, and you carry a lot of your food and supplies out of there. Mm. Somewhere in the middle is where the people out there are going to have to make a decision on where their priority spectrum is going to put them. Uh, do you want more on-road capability and livability? Or do you want more of the freedom of, that a dirt bike can give you and you're just gonna have to dirt bag it, maybe with just a backpack mm -hmm. on your back, which is totally doable. Mm -hmm. We all know that. You can go for a long time with whatever you can carry on your back. But you can see there's a, there's a wide range of priorities 
if you had family or if you're carrying a second person, dirt bike's not going to work for you. Yeah. You're going to have to get into something bigger that you can really safely carry a second person. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Uh, the concept of, uh, when you have the rig, you, you kind of want to be able to thrive in that environment. You don't want to just get by. So if you're talking to San Francisco and bugging out, you might not want, you could even look at the, the bubble of where you would be. And if it's only a hundred gallon tank and you're not prepared to carry external fuel sources uh, or acquire, you might not have enough range. So the dual sport will get you beyond the range uh, in a safe environment. But uh, again, there are drawbacks yeah. to, to both. Um, you got a new expedition coming up and yeah. you're leaving like in a week. And yeah. by the time people see this, you'll be gone. Sure. And we had talked about it and planned a whole bunch of different stuff. What is that experience? And then where is that available online? Oh, sure. So we're shooting season five of the Nordic series uh, with Expedition Overland. We're, well, all the trucks landed in Belgium uh, two days ago. And we will go from there into Norway, Finland, right along the Russian border into Sweden, and then eventually make our way over to Iceland for three and a half weeks of being really deep into the back roads, the F roads, as they're called, in, uh, of Iceland getting right up into their winter. So mm, when does that drop for people? It'll drop uh, right around Christmas, just after Christmas. Ooh, that's a good Christmas present. Yeah. So um, January, just think January. It's January. gonna be in there somewhere. Good New Year's present. Yeah, there you go. Good birthday present. We're talking next year, what are we doing? We next year's <laughs> birthday present. Um, I'm excited about it because I'm hungry for some content from you guys. I follow you guys and love all the stuff you guys put out. Clay, I appreciate your expertise. Heck yeah. I appreciate your candidness and also, like we talked about in the podcast earlier, your ability to tell the full spectrum of the experience, not just like all the pretty stuff that people typically want to uh, signal to the world, but even the grimy stuff. That stuff is where all the magic is and also where all the tidbits of information are, the pro tips of information. And uh, you got the best content in the industry, man. Well, Thank you. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. X Overland guys, Clay Croft down below, all the show notes, all the links. If you haven't realized it yet, we are doing a bug out series and this is the reason we are doing this because we want to talk to experts, get their feedback because we have somebody to blame when it all goes wrong. <laughs> like Clay said, he's the one who said it. Use that bike. <laughs> um, but but uh, all kidding aside, this is a real thing. Preparedness is about being prepared, using recreation as an outlet to be prepared because we want you to have fun, uh, involve your family in the process. But understand that this is a culture, this is a lifestyle and it doesn't have to suck. I mean, you can convince your wife, if you can convince your wife of anything, it's, man, we got to buy these bug out rigs and <laughs> go dirt biking on the weekend so we could facilitate it. You're welcome, guys. You're welcome. Um, guys, Phil Krause Survival, subscribe, hit the notification tab, follow all of Clay's stuff. Until next time, peace out.